Hey guys, today I'm looking back on my 2017 reading year and forwards to this year. This will be a bit of a ramble, lots of things to cover. The first thing is some numbers. I read more books this year, not this year, I'm gonna keep saying this year, uh, I mean 2017. I read more books last year than I ever had before, 130 exactly, counting some of the books that aren't listed on Goodreads. And the most I'd ever read in a year before that was 83, so it was a jump. And something I'm happy about is that I didn't artificially inflate that number with a glut of short books. I read a lot of books that were over 400 pages and also chunkier books over 650 pages. And it was a good year in terms of quality as well as quantity. The wind is absolutely howling outside, so I'm sorry if the sound is strange. Um, for those of you who have been wondering how I read so much when I claim to be a slow reader, I know those two things seem at odds, but it's not the case. Um, the first half of the year I had um, a job with really strange hours, and the second half of the year I was largely unemployed in a small town, so I had a lot of time to read in 2017, and um, <laughs> not to sound self-pitying, but it was often the main positive in my life. So for those reasons, I'm, I'm not expecting to read as many books in 2018, um, but that could be a good thing. Like hopefully I'll have more of a social life. But that shiny number of 130 is the extent of the positive reflecting for now, because I went back and rewatched my 2017 reading goals video and it ended up being a parade of nobody nope. I failed almost every goal, which is okay because it was my first year making public reading resolutions and I've learned a lot about what doesn't work for me. So um, for example, I made a top 20 TBR for 2017 video, which actually had around 26 books on it. Um, yeah, no, I ended up reading eight of those, and that's because it wasn't a smart goal. It was me saying, I hope at some point during the year I feel like reading these books, but that never happened. I never felt like picking up most of them in 2017. So now I'm treating it more as, as a loose, eventual TBR. Another big fail was my category goals. I threw out that I wanted to read more Central European and Russian lit, more books in Spanish, and then dip into fantasy and gothic fiction. And the only one of those that I touched was fantasy, you know, riding the Robin Hobb wave. Um, and that's something I'm really excited about from last year is getting back into epic fantasy as an adult, which is something I used to read all the time as a kid. And I can't wait to, to explore more authors and series once I finish The Realm of the Elderlings. But what I've learned from this failure is that long-term goals and yearly goals are not the same thing. And if I want to accomplish something in a specific time frame, whether that be monthly or yearly, I need a specific goal at some point. I can't just be like, oh, I want to read more of X book. It probably won't happen that way. A goal I did pretty well with was to read a play and a poetry collection every month. I got close to achieving that one. Um, but in this case, setting a monthly goal at the beginning of the year didn't quite work for me because what would often happen is that it'd get to the last week of the month and I'd suddenly think, oh, I need to pick up a play and a poetry collection. Like, it felt like a chore sometimes, but it was worth it to try it that way to, and to incorporate them more into my reading. And my new strategy is going to be to buy or borrow a few titles from those categories in bulk, so so three or four at a time, and to put them in the thick of my TBR shelves so that when I'm in the mood to read, I go to those shelves and I sometimes pick poetry or a play, not because it's the 25th of the month, but because I'm interested in those specific titles. Back to fails. In 2017, I planned to do a series on opera arias, and I made the first video in that series on an aria that I absolutely love but I never continued for an unforeseen reason. Um, so when I was living in Russia, I had no space to sing freely. And I, I sang sometimes in the shower, like in an I'm trying not to disturb people kind of way, but that was it for the year I lived there. And even now that I'm living back at home, um, <laughs> it's making me sad just to talk about it now, um, your voice is a muscle. And if you don't use it, it weakens and gets worse. So, my voice 
after having not sung for 18 months is something that's just unrecognizable to me. I hate the way it sounds. I hate the way it feels to sing. And um, it's really painful to think about and to talk about. So that's why I never continued with that series. But I do want to thank the few people who enjoyed that first video I made and, and requested more. Like, I really appreciate that. Getting to slightly brighter things, um, 2017 was a much better year for classics than 2016, when, in which I read almost all recent releases, and I'm hoping to tip the scales back even more towards older books in 2018. I love reading new releases, but it, I enjoy them so much more when I break them up. And speaking of breaking things up, I didn't realize what a trash nonfiction year I had. I honestly thought it was pretty decent, but then I went through my Goodreads profile and counted 21 nonfiction books from 2017. Now that's not including poetry, which is often categorized as nonfiction, but I don't think of it that way. Uh, but still, that's 16% of my reading. Not good. But I got a lot of amazing nonfiction books for Christmas, and I'm, I'm going to show you guys those in a haul soon. So I'm hoping those will kind of kickstart a, a new year of better nonfiction reading. The 2017 goal that I absolutely smashed was to cover the Bailey Women's Prize, and I said in that original video that I wanted to review the shortlist. I ended up reviewing the whole long list um, and did some wrap-ups and reaction videos besides, and that's all linked in a playlist down below along with all the other videos that I've mentioned so far. Um, I'm not going to commit to reading the whole 2018 long list, but I will be doing full reviews on the shortlist and dipping into the long list as life allows. So those are my stated goals and how I did with them. Pretty bad across the board, but like I said, I don't really mind. I learned a lot from it. But something else unexpected happened throughout last year, and that's that my taste noticeably changed. If you watch the video I recently made on my favorite books of 2017, so many of those are weird and structurally innovative. Like, the kinds of books that I would be nervous to hand to my friends and family who don't read very much. And that just wasn't my thing at all, even two years ago. I used to be almost an entirely character-based reader. If I didn't care about the characters, I didn't enjoy the book. And I know a lot of other people read that way, and, and that's a perfectly valid priority, but my preferences have changed. I think part of it is getting more into book reviewing, and, and so looking at books like Clocks. How is this constructed? What's making it tick? What were the author's goals? And then considering how much I like the finished product. Um, I mean, I'll always love a good character study. It's one of the things I appreciate most in books. But for whatever reason, I loved so many books in 2017 that had no character development to speak of. And it feels weird to admit that. It feels like a part of my reading identity is gone. And like, my preferences are very much up in the air at this point. So 2018 will be an interesting year in that respect, in, in terms of tracking what I actually like now. Okay, time to talk about booktube goals, and most of these are sort of un-goals, dumb habits I want to undo and extricate myself from. So the golden rule for 2018 is going to be that if a reading rule only exists because I have this channel, it doesn't actually exist. Because, okay, here's the thing. If I'd been just a viewer with no channel watching the spate of videos at the end of last year about booktube pressure and competitive reading, part of me would have been sympathetic, but part of me would have been rolling my eyes, like, calm down, everyone. Just read what you want to read. It's not that hard. Um, but as a content creator, I have accumulated a series of arbitrary, rigid rules gradually and sneakily over time, and all the community introspection really helped me confront the reality of those rules. Often they're vague, half-formed ideas and feelings that then go on to influence my reading disproportionately. Um, so, for example, Pressuring myself into finishing a book before the end of the month so that I can include it in my next wrap-up. Um, not allowing myself to read several books at once on the same topic, even if I'm really interested in that topic in the moment, because I want to have variety for my viewers. Um, and something that I've only recently realized that I've been doing um, is that I've been avoiding 
collected works of poetry because <laughs> this is this is really dumb. If you read several shorter works that make up those collected works, you can count them towards your total on Goodreads instead of just the one collected book of poetry, which is like financially and, and logically is just insane. Like it's so stupid. And even though I talked about reading plenty of long books last year, um, I stopped doing that at the end of the year because I realized that I could reach that like 130 magic number, which was a number that I, I thought was absolutely impossible even a year ago. And what that meant is that I didn't pick up books like this one, The Essential Writings of Ralph Waldo Emerson, even though I was in the mood for it at the end of the year because I knew I wouldn't finish it in 2017. Any random rule or goal that keeps me from reading Emerson is a dumb dumb dumb. It should not exist. So those rules won't exist anymore. I decree it. All this means that I'm making changes to my channel and Goodreads. The biggest change being that I'm not going to do monthly wrap-ups anymore. I'm going to be doing a December 2017 wrap-up just to have that one whole year of me talking about every book I read. But starting January on, I'm going to be doing top five books of the month videos. And if I only read a few books, I'll, I'll do like a top three or something. And I know this is the right choice for me because I feel relieved when I think about it. I made this channel because I need to talk about books. I don't need to talk about every book I read. I actually have no desire to do that. Um, first of all, I don't always have something to say about a book. I always have thoughts and opinions, but often they don't feel necessary to share. Um, I'd much rather stick to focusing on the books that I actively want to discuss. So this new mix of having a lot of my reading public, but some of it private, is really appealing to me. Um, now for those of you who are thinking about the top five format and are worried that this is going to become an exclusively positive channel full of sunshine and purring kittens, don't worry, I will be doing occasional review videos with two or three books that I've read in recent months and have been meh for me that I want to talk to you about. Um, and even though my heart belongs to the women's prize, the shortlist usually has a book or two for me to rant about. Let's be real. I also decided to stop doing Goodreads ratings in 2018, at least for the first chunk of the year. Um, if you follow me there, I'll still be writing blurbs after I finish each book, so four or five lines of what I thought just no rating for most books. Now I might be rating like Robin Hobb titles just for a series comparison, and if I really hate or love a book I might dish out a one star, a big fat five star rating, but overall Goodreads has become way too prominent in my reading. I think the star ratings are useful, I'm not going to be avoiding them for any philosophical reasons or because I think they're a bad idea in general, I've just realized that they're coming between me and the books I'm reading. So when I was halfway through a lot of books that I read last year, I was already thinking about whether I was going to give them three or four stars, um, and I worried about being too harsh or too generous with mediocre books, and, and what kind of a reviewer my ratings made me. Basically, it's entirely the wrong way around, especially for books between three and four stars, where the rating I end up giving a book will influence how I think of it, as opposed to my thoughts being reflected in the rating. And I just don't need that chunk in my life, so no more. Also, I, I love not feeling compelled to rate classics anymore. I've always rated things based on an imprecise combination of my personal enjoyment and how good I think a book is, which is a, a slightly unsatisfying system when those two things are at odds. And it's resulted in certain classics getting lower ratings because I admired but didn't love them, which is fine. We're not obligated to give all classics five stars just because of how important they are, but I don't want to give Oedipus Rex four stars, okay? It makes me feel basic. So those are some of the changes I'll be making to my public reading this year. In terms of reviewing, 2017 was fantastic in that I became a published reviewer for the first time with the literary journal Open Letters Monthly. Now that particular website has closed down, although you can still access all the old reviews, but we have a new website now called Open Letters Review, and I am so excited to be one of the editors for that. 
along with other booktubers like Britta Bowler and Jess from Garden Scriptorium, um, and people who are big in the business like Steve Donahue, the reviewer for the Christian Science Monitor and a fellow booktuber, um, and Sam Sachs who writes the Fiction Chronicle for the Wall Street Journal. So if you're interested in trying your hand at written reviews, we have a whole different system now. Instead of monthly reviews, we're going to have almost daily content. And instead of 2,000 words minimum, like it was before, it's going to be around 100, not 100, it's going to be around 1,000 words maximum. So you can contact me if you're interested, or even better, Steve. Um, and I also have personal goals for 2018 for expanding and writing for other outlets. Um, this is a hard business to crack into, but I'm gonna try. Back to booktube, I don't have any special goals for this channel, I'm just gonna keep chugging along, um, but re-watching that 2017 goals video just drove home for me how much the channel has grown, especially in the past few months, and part of me is like, where are all of you people coming from, you know? But hey, welcome, really glad to have you here. Uh, and it's not that I'm not proud of my channel, I, I am, I just think, I've never expected it to keep growing because there are so many channels with smart, lovely people that stay really small. In a lot of ways, it seems like a toss-up as to who gets a following and who doesn't. Um, and so I guess I'm, I'm more on the lucky side of that coin than I thought. And 2017 was also the year that some of my favorite booktubers commented on my videos. And, and some people give me shout outs too. And like, I am not remotely cool about it. I freaked out every time. Winding down, last resolution, I promise, is that I want to watch a wider variety of booktube this year. In my personal life, I'm one of those people who has two or three close friends, and I spend almost all my time with those friends. I've never had a broad social network, it's just not my thing. And I think I've kind of been treating booktube the same way, where I watch a relatively small number of channels, but I follow them in a dedicated way, and that's fine. I don't necessarily need to subscribe to hundreds of channels. That would stress me out, I think. But I want to watch more diversely and comment on, on a greater variety of people's content, especially when it comes to booktubers who comment on my videos. I have a lot of small booktubers who support me and I want to be better at checking out their videos because as a creator, it feels really bad when you love someone's content and comment on their stuff and they never once engage with your channel. Um, I've had that on both ends now and, and it's bound to happen. We can't all follow everyone. Um, but there is an element of taking people's support for granted and, and being clicky, almost, and I want to do a better job of avoiding those things. That's it. This might be the longest video I've ever done. I don't know. We'll see. It was Ramble Town, but do let me know what you think about any of these plans, especially um, in terms of my monthly wrap-ups and my Goodreads changes, and let me know about any of your 2018 reading goals. I love geeking out about that stuff, so please do geek out with me if you feel so inclined. Bye, guys. Thanks for watching.